The seventh and last category of nevi is represented by unclassifiable melanocytic lesions. Melanocytic nevi from all previous categories may sometimes show conflicting diagnostic criteria from a clinical dermoscopic and or a histopathologic point of view. A gray zone always exists where the borders between, between benign and malignant are unfocused. The three levels, clinical, dermoscopic and histopathologic, of the morphologic diagnosis of melanocytic proliferation exhibit a different extent of the gray zone, being larger with the naked eye examination and smaller with the histopathologic examination. This is a globular congenital nevus with clinical and demoscopic confounding features. The presence of blue-white irregular color renders this lesion similar to a melanoma. However, this is just a morphologic similarity. Biologically, this lesion is benign. This is a reticular acquired melanocytic proliferation with irregular network, which renders the lesion asymmetric, thus similar to a melanoma. Also histopathologically, this lesion is difficult to interpret. Thus, it belongs to the group of unclassifiable lesions. These lesions do not represent a biological entity with intermediate malignant potential. They are just lesions with confounding morphologic features. We do not know if they are benign or malignant, but the lesion does. This is a blue nevus with clinical and dermoscopic confounding features. The presence of brown, blue and white irregular colors renders this lesion similar to a melanoma. However, this is just a morphologic similarity. Biologically, this lesion is benign. This is a spitzoid melanocytic proliferation with multiple colors and irregular globules which renders this lesion asymmetric, thus similar to a melanoma. Also histopathologically, this lesion is difficult to interpret, thus it belongs to the group of unclassifiable lesions. Again, this lesion does not represent a biological entity with intermediate malignant potential. It is just a lesion with confounding morphologic features. We cannot be sure whether it is benign or malignant, but the lesion does. As outlined by the previous four examples, all common types of nevi might be sometimes difficult to differentiate from melanoma. We believe that an intermediate atypical or dysplastic entity between benign nevi and melanoma does not exist. Instead, we are prone to believe that there exists a human limitation in recognizing the benign or malignant nature of a lesion, in which morphologic features of benign and malignant lesions are mixed together. The proposed classification of melanocytic nevi is an attempt to help clinicians differentiate the various types of melanocytic nevi based on simple and specific features that identify those lesions as distinctive entities. Another purpose is to facilitate communication between clinicians and pathologists by offering a straightforward and reproducible classification system based on simple morphologic features. Whether or not pathologists will continue to discuss common and dysplastic nevi or common and atypical spitz nevi remain open. The most important issue for clinicians is to avoid unnecessary excisions of benign lesions and, especially, to avoid underdiagnosis of a melanoma. A clear classification system based on recognizable clinical and dermoscopic features might be useful in this regard.